All right, you guys, today we're covering GeoGrid, what it is and why it is fundamentally the most important element in any retaining wall construction once the wall reaches four feet, has a, or has a slope behind it, or has a surcharge or the load from a building behind it. Now, if you're just tuning in, um, make sure you go back to the first video, because in that video, we actually do a hands-on demonstration. showing how effective GeoGrid is at retaining soil and holding it together in comparison to a retaining wall built without it. So check that one out. And today what we're doing is we're taking the lessons that we learned in the first video and actually going out onto real job sites and analyzing retaining walls using the knowledge we gained in the other video to look at these walls and to make yourself ask a question, are these walls built the right way? And once you start to understand the fundamental principles of GeoGrid, you start to see things behind the scenes that otherwise would just look perfectly fine. So we're going out to some sites today and checking out some retaining walls that just make you go, hmm. All right, so now we're gonna go into two sites which are, hmm, arguably almost virtually impossible to build but yet you're gonna find retaining walls there how tall do you think that wall is 16 feet 18 20 16 16 to 20 feet right yeah so from what i've taught you so far how long do, how far back do you think the grid lengths need to be to make that wall right oh i, I don't know I wouldn't 20 feet so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. For every foot of wall height, you should have one foot of GeoGrid behind it. Okay. You can kind of, you can start to cheat on shorter walls by using a bigger block, right? Okay. But once you get over a certain height, which is typically 11 feet, you can't cheat anymore. Cheating doesn't work. You've got to go back to the old engineering principles, which means you've got to um, get the right amount of grid in. I mean, and, what, and when we look at this wall, Frankie, do you see anything that would prevent from getting the right amount of grid in? The garage. Like a garage that obviously was never moved? The telephone pole was down. Yeah, that might have been moved. The telephone pole was potentially moved because if I look at it, I can see that it's a different color than the one next to it. But that garage, I don't think was. So to get this, this wall in place, 18 foot back means that they sacrificed on the geo grid structurally these guys uh, i mean uh, aesthetically these guys did a decent job on this retaining wall but structurally you've got to question if everything is in place to make it right and the grid on a wall this high is more important than the block the block actually just becomes a second secondary in the entire structure of the thing in fact when you do this right you could literally take the block off and all the soil will stay in place just from the geogrid as long as you've got it in installed properly. So the block itself becomes almost like a facade at that point. And what about this wall? How tall is this wall, Frankie? Five feet? Almost. And is there a surcharge on this wall? Two five feet back, right? Yep. <laughs> so you look at this wall right here. <laughs> I mean, this this is kind of a dead giveaway. Four feet back, maybe, you know? <laughs> I mean, we've got 18 inches of clearance on a five foot tall wall. There's no way that this wall has GeoGrid in it, and it's got a surcharge from this building unless the footings of this building go down deep enough that it's not presenting a surcharge, and then they wouldn't have needed a retaining wall in the first place. They could have just put a stone facade up. So it looks to me, just from what I can can gather, that uh, here's another potential problem area. And for sure right here, this is a for sure. There's no question about it. So the building could have footings that go deep enough that it doesn't impact a surcharge onto this retaining wall, but the sidewalk does not. The asphalt 
does not. You see this car above the wall, the wall, will you stand by the wall for me for a minute, Frankie? Mm -hmm. We've got a five foot tall wall, four foot, five foot, somewhere, four, four, five, yeah. with a surcharge on it. This wall should have two, possibly three layers of grid. Each layer of grid needs to be four to five feet back. And they did not put that in because you can tell the parking lot's not been altered or changed. So there's too many indicators on this wall saying that corners were cut. Although the wall looks good, it's not built the right way. Here's where guys got a contractors can screw themselves pretty bad. Whether they give a warranty or not, it does not matter. If there's faulty craftsmanship oh, yeah. or faulty work, they're on the hook. No matter what happens to that wall, if it's built the wrong way, now if they built it the right way, they're off the hook right. if it fails. But if it's built the wrong way, which here, it is because you could otherwise see where this parking lot would have had to been cut right where that car is sitting they would have had to cut that remove that portion of the parking lot and that was that never happened so these guys like to use hybrid systems i was here when the company was installing this wall i actually called up my engineering company because i could not believe what i was seeing and they were using this hybrid system where they take a wall like this and you can see that the sidewalk was never replaced in fact look at there's the there's where the sidewalk was replaced here's the old sidewalk so the sidewalk was not replaced and i know it wasn't because i was here when they were building it and literally all they were doing was putting this porous aggregate behind it and i've seen other youtubers do this it doesn't work in theory it works in practicality it doesn't work because as we look at this wall we can actually see this wall is already failing this wall is not that old this wall is already sliding down because of just the slight surcharge from the sidewalk it's not a big one but it doesn't have to be a big one and even in these small zones because you can't get grit in here so this this building owner paid for this wall and they're going to be repaying for it to have it built because once a wall goes into a state of failure like you see on this one they pop like a balloon these first indicators the little signs the separation the leaning the tilt those are the signs like blowing up a balloon blow 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 and then that balloon pops catastrophic failure they rupture and you can actually see on this wall as you look down it, the top is actually starting to cantilever over. They couldn't get the grid in. They didn't have permission to cross the property line. So as we look at this, they were limited to that fence line. It's gonna be a titch hard to see you guys, but this is actually leaning in. You can see where the sidewalk is shifted and adjusted right here. And that's as the wall moves out, the sidewalk and everything follow suit. Well, let's go up around the corner and see if we can spot how this looks as we transition around here. I don't know. It might not be as bad as it looks from the bottom. And a lot of those weeds help cover it up. You can see it. Look down. You can see it's going that way. Because they built this 12 to 14 foot tall wall, but we're limited by this fence. This fence has never been removed. You can look at the fence, you can see the rust. You can see where this fence was never touched. That fence would have had to been taken out to build this wall the right way. Wall comes down, fence comes out. They excavate all the way back into here. Heck, you're gonna be back here with your oversizing to get 12 to 14 foot grid lengths at the very bottom. And no core fill, nothing. You can't cheat them, it, it catches up to you. You can't cheat on retaining walls. We just looked at that wall that was doing the crappie floppy. Yeah. This is a wall I built about five years before that one. Oh yeah? Yep, so to build this wall, Matt, I had to actually have a hoist come in and hold up. I actually called a crane in, Frankie. And you see these electrical poles? Yeah. 
I actually held them in place so that I could dig as close as I possibly could to them so that I could do it. Now, what you see behind, there's a couple things that are wrong even with my wall. You see those trees behind there? When they start, when I seen they started planting those trees behind my wall, I actually came out here and I said, you can't do that. And they're like, it's our wall, it's our site, we can. These trees are going to make my wall fail, eventually, because they're gonna keep growing up, the root balls are gonna grow down, that's a dynamic load, and that means that that tree is going to, if it catches the wind, it's gonna be doing this sort of thing. And my walls, my wall, if that was a building, could hold it up. I mean, because it's designed to hold up an actual alleyway. So that fence is a separation of an alleyway. I could hold up, a, I could hold up that building right there, but I can't hold up something that is not, it's not designed to hold it up to keep it from moving. And that's what those trees are going to do. That's the difference. So you can see where these trees are putting pressure on it. So this, this wall is actually designed to hold up this entire alleyway. Well, I hope that clears up some of the uh, questions about GeoGrid and why it's so important. Now, some of you guys are going to be asking me, well, what do you do in a situation like you just pointed out, those two last retaining walls? How do you build them? Well, you either build them right or you don't build them at all. You can't cheat on a retaining wall, and if you do cheat, it unfortunately will eventually catch up to you. So sometimes it's better to just walk away from a job than to try to tackle a job using a, uh, unproven construction methods. Sometimes it's just better not to do the retaining wall. There's going to be times when you're going to get calls to do a project, and if you know that you can't do it the right way, that doesn't mean you should do it the wrong way because the next guy is willing to do it the wrong way. Never, never cave on quality. Never, I don't even, what is the, is that the right way I want to say it? Never cave, never, never something on quality. Never, uh, it's not cave, but it's, uh, it's like never, Cheat? No, I'm not cheat. What is that? It's a word. Of course, that's a word. What else would it be? Um, something on quality. Uh, what the heck is the, what is the word I'm looking for? All right. If you guys know the word I'm looking for, put it in the comments down below because I can't figure it out. Just whatever you do, build them right. Your reputation depends on it. That's all I got for you today, guys. God bless and go get them. I can't figure out what that word is. What is the word I'm looking for?